Hey you guys, how are you going? Crystal here with another video. I am on a roll, but just trying to do a quick update of my life and what's been going on with motherhood. Um, I've been so caught up in um, some other things and trying to really focus in on building some other businesses that I have going on, but did not want to leave my channel hanging because I love it and I love to share things that I am have going on as far as motherhood my just my journey so while um dad is out picking up the other two kids from montessori from montessori i have the little one you see her she's right over there I'm right there eating her spaghetti really quick she just woke up from a nap so i figured i'd share why i did not homeschool this year and um why I put my kids in Montessori. And I'm super excited about this because honestly, if it wasn't homeschooling, Montessori was my only option. Um, I tried homeschooling when my son, my first child started kindergarten. At that time, I was about uh, seven, eight months pregnant and it was just tough. I didn't have any support. I was living in the house with my parents. We were just going through a lot of things. That's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, I, I knew before I had children that I wanted to homeschool. And then when I had the opportunity, the timing was just not good because of just other things going on. So my son went to public school up until second grade, which was the previous school year. And his, for some reason, all his second and his first and second grade year, the second half of the school year, he started having a tough time. Like he his behavior changed the second half of the year so you know after christmas break they go back to school to finish out the year and his behavior would change like his grades or anything wouldn't change because he's Mommy. so he's so smart Mom, hmm? why you put to give it some flavor it needed salt so it could taste better so he was having some difficulties and his behavior would change um so, and even in kindergarten, he did that a little bit, but it gradually got worse in first grade, the second half of the school year, and then second grade, the second half of the school year. So, in his sec ending his second grade year, it he had started in January, which January of this year, 2019, but the teacher didn't really let it be known that he was having behavior changes until probably two months after he started. Like he started coming home with a note in his agenda here and there. And then I got a phone call, which was kind of, hmm. Because my son, he is like, everybody loves him. Every teacher loves him. He's a helper. He's so smart. He's so advanced, but his behavior began to change. So I began to get concerned because he was just doing some things that was just like, Pfft. Like, okay, what's really going on, you know? So I began to talk to some other people, and um, the teachers didn't have it under control. Then they eventually eventually got the principal in, in, involved and the guidance counselor, and they wanted, now they want to, you know, test him for being gifted. But this was after me talking to a few people that we know personally that has been in the school, uh, the, the school education system and industry for years like my husband's godmother she's been in it for like 20 plus years so she enlightened me when she said that he could be getting bored with school and he's way more advanced than the what's going on in the classroom so they show these things through their behavior because they really don't know how to verbally tell us that okay mom i'm bored at school and i want to do more so she said that and then it wasn't until after his behavior problems got worse that the guidance counselor got involved and then she's like, okay, let's test him for gifted. But at that time, it was too far gone. It was too late. Um, hmm. Okay, wait till I'm done with my video. Um, he, it was too far gone as far as his behavior problems. So I had to take him out. I had to um, take him out of school I think March, April, May, June, maybe two and a half months before the school year ended and I had to homeschool him and that was like a bomb dropped in our household because we just had so many other things going on 
and we were not prepared to have to pull him out of homeschool him. It was not an option to put him in any other school because it was public school. So, I mean, I think he would have had the same thing because he would have been going from one school to another, but the same environment and education. And so I had to pull him out, homeschool him. And we didn't do anything for like a week because it was just, you know, my husband was like, you, you know, you handle that. So I had to figure everything out. And when I tell y'all, it was the most, like one of the most difficult times for us because my son, he needs to, knowing his personality, he needs to be around people and he likes to be in an environment where he's learning. And um, us being home every day was like, <laughs> because my husband was no help and then me and my son we were figuring this thing out so this was probably the longest two and a half months that we had and to homeschool and we were home every day and me and my son we're not home people like even right now y'all i've been in the house the past month and a half like i've been in the house really because i have no had no choice because i've been like not feeling well but to be in the house all day long, like homeschooling or me being a work from home mom. Mm -mm. And my son is the same way. Like we have to get out of the house and we have to be around people and we have to be able to let our creative juices flow. And I realized that during our homeschool time. So even all of this time where I thought I wanted to be a homeschool, stay at home, work at home mom, I realized that no, it's not for me. It's not for my son. It's not for any of my children because they love being around other kids all day long. So yeah, I know my options of being a homeschool mom and co-ops and getting involved with other homeschool moms, but I just have kids that they just want to do their own thing. Like, and then we come together as a family in the evening or on the weekends, or we go out to the park or we take them out places like that's the family that we are. So I think it's very important that we went through that phase of homeschooling because we realized that it was not something that we wanted to do. So even over the summer, as we, you know, prepared, I didn't know where I was going to send my kids to. And then God just automatically worked things out where we had gotten the scholarship. Let me tell you this, why this was important. Because now my five-year-old was going to go to kindergarten. And um, it was like, whew, I say from the time she was maybe like three and a half or four, we began to un see her personality and see who she is and how she is. And she's always like so happy and and rainbows and you know glitter and stuff like she's very happy and loving so to put her in a public school environment concerned me it really did like because I'm like public school is not for her and you know I would talk to a lot of people and they would say oh don't worry stuff like that. I'm like no nah, no nah, bro I'm like no nah, bro I know my kids I pay attention to my kids and I know that a public school environment is not going to be a good fit for her I knew that so you know, I just kept on going because I'm like, I can't put her in a public school and my son couldn't go back to public school because it just was not a good fit for them. But then I'm like, homeschool ain't a good fit for us neither. So then, you know, I was weighing my options because I applied for a scholarship to get them in um, a better school, like a more advanced school, maybe trying a private school. But I had also heard that private schools are just like, Public schools, they just, you know, charge a lot of money. So, um, I just knew I wasn't homeschooled. So, I even checked out this homeschooling um, um, program that's in our local area. Like, the kids could actually, it's like a homeschool environment, but they could actually go there four days out of the week and be there all day long. And it's untraditional. It's not like public school. It's like they're being homeschooled, but they're outside of the house. So that was my option as well, but to pay for that for them for the year at, at this time was kind of difficult for us. You know, we, it's not in our budget. I, you have to wait until I'm done. So having a budget, and that wasn't in our budget to pay out of pocket for, it wasn't in our budget to pay for them to go to this program, but... I would have loved to get them in the program if I could. That was also my only option at the time. Like, when I tell y'all, I was so tight. Like, my options were so tight. 
And then all of a sudden, God opened doors for me to get this scholarship for my kids. In, in the state of Florida, they have a scholarship called the Step Up Scholarship. So here I am, like two or three weeks away from, actually a month out from school, and I did not know what I was going to do with my kids as far as education, but I knew public school was not an option, and it was kind of too late to sign up for a, a, um, a private school, and if I could get them in some private schools, I would have had to pay like a $400 or $500 registration fee on top of, you know, giving them the scholarship and like these ridiculous application and fees and stuff, and then have y'all ever looked at private schools for little babies? Like, we have one particular private school in our area, and it, two, actually, one of them costs $10,000 for a year for a second grader. No, for a kindergartner. And then it was $10,000 for, no, it was $10,000 for the kindergartner and $12,000 for my son going to third grade. Like, that's tuition. Like, that's college tuition. I'm like, what y'all got at this school? Because, you know, for me doing my research, I'm like, it's nothing special. And it's definitely not what I'm looking for as far as my kids' education. Because I look at the curriculums and the standards that these schools go by. And um, that definitely was not doing it for me as well. Y'all excuse my hair. Every time I turn around, it's like, <laughs> it looks nice in the front, right? But it's like, <laughs> but, um... So that was, our, we got the scholarship and they gave us a certain amount, which was about $6,500. So I had to find a school that fits that. And then all of a sudden we live in a certain city and I called a school in another city. I mean, it's not far, you know, when I say cities, I mean, it takes us 20 minutes to get to the other school, but I was trying to find something that was local to us, but there was nothing here where we live in Florida, in the city we live in. So I called a Montessori school and I was just like, hey, y'all got openings? And the lady was like, yes, for a third grader and a kindergarten. I was like, say what? I'm like, God, this is nobody but you because you know the desires of my heart. And God knows that I love my children. He really does. He, he knows that I have a heart for my children. And he knows that um, I would do anything for them as far as their education. Excuse me, y'all. We had to take a quick potty break, y'all. But um, God knew my heart, and he opened up the doors for me to get my kids in Montessori. Montessori. So if you're not familiar with what Montessori is and why I chose it, um, it was the closest thing to um i'm looking at my computer y'all so y'all see me because i want to give y'all like a good definition of what montessori is um before i just you know but montessori is pretty much the closest thing that you can get to a homeschool environment they are very hands-on untraditional um education like they don't go like a strict curriculum and you're gonna learn this 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 and Every student is not learning the same thing or the same way. And that was the most important thing to me because if you think about traditional education, my kids were still learning the same things that I was learning. And I'm like, this is like, we're so far advanced. Like these kids in elementary, we were nowhere near that in elementary. So um, that concerned me. Like I'm just the untraditional mom. I'm like, no, my kids are genius. Like they need, they need genius education. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, um, Montessori is, it allows the child to move at their own pace. They don't have to be rushed. So if like right now, Cadence, um, my five-year-old, she's in kindergarten and you know, they put her in a certain, uh, subject and say it's writing or spelling or reading because she wants to learn to read right now um you know if you leave it up to society they'll say oh your child should know how to read right now no she shouldn't she you know <laughs> she shouldn't know how to read right now if she you, you get what i'm saying but they'll keep her there until she becomes strong in that and then she moves on to the next thing so really what they do in montessori is they allow a child to learn a certain thing until they become really confident in it and then they move on so if you compare that to the um the education system that we have now um 
you know, they learn something, they move on, they learn something. It doesn't, every child is learning the same way, the same thing at the same time. So if they have a hard time in it and it's difficult, the teacher is not going to take time for and stay there with them for another couple weeks because they have to stick to a certain curriculum and schedule. So th that was part of the reason why my son got frustrated too, because he was starting to learn some new things after the break, Christmas break. And it was all new and they don't take time to teach you in regular public school. So I knew for Cadence, she has a different learning style. She's very visual. She's very creative. She, you know, she's, when you know your children, you know what they need. And um, Montessori provides that. So that's what it is. And if you know your children need something different from what's being offered, you do not have to settle, okay? I gave homeschool a shot. I was stuck on it for a while, but then I was like, mm -mm, cause I need my day to be free. And then I need to be confident in the fact that my children are learning in a way that I know that they can learn. So the first week of Montessori was really good. Um, my son, like four days into third grade, the teacher let us know that he's on the fourth grade level and he's way far more advanced than, you know, than third grade level. And we knew that already, but if he had stayed in a public school, we wouldn't know that right now. They would have to pretty much go throughout the entire year before they say, you know, they don't even test unless I ask. Like there, something would have had happened for them to know that my son is more, way more advanced than what he was learning in school. So, the only that that's what I like about it. It's a good environment. It's untraditional. They're free to do things and be very hands on. And um, the only thing that's traditional about the school that I put them in is they have to wear a uniform. Um, but other than that, there's no complaint that I have. I just wish that they could wear, you know, what they want to wear. So I'm going to tell y'all really quick. So it says here that the Montessori method of education developed by Maria Montessori, so research her, is a child-centered educational approach based on scientific observations of children. Um, and it's, a, it's centered around the child, like I said. So wherever they're at, and if they're not confident in a certain topic or subject, they don't move on until they become confident in that, and then they move on. So that's why I chose Montessori, because I want my children to still experience discipline in school and routine, but I don't want them to learn that they are like everybody else. They have to learn like everybody else. They have to be like everybody else because every child is unique and I feel like every education system should cater to a child and who they are and where they are because I feel like that's how a lot of children fail in school because they didn't get the opportunity to feel like they are one of a kind or that they are unique or that they have actual issues or they have um, strengths and weaknesses. It's like in the public education system, you are one child. We all are one kid and this is how we're gonna learn. And I think that sucks. Like I wish my mom knew about Montessori and all this stuff because I'll probably be totally different right now. <laughs> so that's how it's going so far. The first week has been great. Like I said, I honestly would not change um, schools, you know, because this was so last minute and, and I got them in a Montessori, we're going to see how this year's go, this year goes, but it's good. So good so far. Um, now we're working on getting my three-year-old in there because they also have a child care center. So I'm going to be working on getting her in there within the next month or so. And it's going to be great. And I do suggest that you do your research on Montessori. If you feel like homeschool is not for you, but you know that your kid needs to be in a different learning environment, please look at Montessori. And if you're in a different state, research the scholarships or anything that any funding you could possibly get to get your child in a school that can help them because it is available. You just have to do your research. And one thing about, you know, parents, we suffer for 
we suffer because of a lack of knowledge. So there are so many, especially black parents. So there are so many different things that are available for us, but because we don't research, we don't make phone calls, we don't be consistent, and we don't really go after what we want, we'll just settle for whatever is out there. And for me, the world we live in today, I, you know, I don't have time to settle for whatever for my children. I don't even have time to settle for whatever for my life anymore. So I know if I'm at a point where I'm not willing to settle for whatever anymore for my life, I can't allow that for my kids. So I want to give them the best possible life and education as I can right where I am right now. And getting knowledge and applying it and learning about these different fundings and grants and schools and different programs that are available for us, then we can do more and be better and um we can glow up that way right so <sighs> i'm going to be documenting this journey as well the montessori journey um the teachers are great so far um the, the kids love it and um yeah so i guess i'll go month by month not necessarily week by week but i'll go month by month about how our montessori journey is and see how it goes by the end of the year. So God is so good to me, y'all. That was definitely a desire of my heart. And I know he's going to work everything out for me and my family. So remember to glow. Remember to affirm yourself. Remember to do what makes you and your family happy. Do what works for you because your journey doesn't look like anybody else's journey. Your family tradition routine, I heard whatever you're trying to build for your family, um, do what works for you and what fits your family and don't let anybody come along and tell you what you should and should not do. I mean, you could consider opinions and things like that, but don't take what they give you and run with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to do that, especially as a mom, like people would say, oh, well, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. And I'd be like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't. And I didn't consider myself and what works for my family. My family is unique. My children are unique. My husband is unique. So we have to do what works for us, the Clayton family. And I'm sticking to that firmly. Whatever God has for us, that is what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can't do that, y'all. But <laughs> So do what makes you happy and glow up. Glow up, glow up. Follow me on Instagram at Crystal Clayton Glows. If you have any questions about researching a Montessori, finding scholarships or anything in your area, um, choosing between homeschooling Montessori, or maybe you've been having behavior problems with your children and you just don't know what to do. Um, children can't verbally express, but it doesn't mean that they're bad or anything. It just means that they need help and you have to know how to help them. So whether you need to seek outside help or um, I, that's what I do. I don't try to figure things out on my own. I seek people that are kind of in the areas where I need help at. So I know therapists, I know counselors, I know people that have worked in the education system and I seek them and I ask them questions because it's crazy for me to try to figure everything out on my own. When I have people that are experienced in the things that I'm experiencing. So do that, do what you have to do for your family. So until next time. I'll talk to you guys.